guys. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Greg. Uh, just wanted to get your initial thoughts on it. I thought Sacramento probably played a pretty good game, but um, you guys didn't seem to generate a lot of offense and, and certainly gave us chances. What, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I thought uh, <clears throat> I thought we had a good start first couple of minutes. I thought the ball was moving pretty quick. We're in good spots, and I think really the kind of their first possession, we're down one zero. Uh, you know, leading into it, talking about you know managing transitions uh, and set pieces were going to be the two big things for us to uh, to manage tonight. Uh, and right off the bat, we didn't manage a kind of a transition ball behind us, and we're down 1-0 against the team that, be, to be fair, then they're they're stingy defensively, right? Those back three, they get to a back five pretty quickly. They'll get everyone behind the ball, and they'll defend. Uh, they defend. There was, <clears throat> they did that well in terms of protecting their goal late in the in the second half. Sorry, the second half of the first half. They were able to get out and press us, and it was it was a big issue for us where we didn't we didn't really create the overload in midfield that we needed, and so it, for them it ended up being a pretty simple man on man press uh, because our four guys with Kevin and Dayon, uh, Sam, Efra were pretty high, which made it easy for them to defend us, which could release their midfielders onto our midfielders, and and we weren't creating the uncertainty for them. We weren't creating the overloads and, uh, and their intensity pressing us just gave us a hard time. We weren't moving fast enough either for each other to create opportunities. And so, um, <clears throat> as that was happening, um, we changed it at halftime to put Ephra inside to try to create more of a three man midfield against their, really their two to create some uncertainty. Um, but then we just turning over the ball, like the amount of just lack of concentration, turnovers, just simple missed passes, it's uh, it's just it's killer because then you're having to defend in transition again. It's an energy suck. It's uh, it's an emotional suck. It's it's there's just it was just poor. Like there's just no two ways about it. It's just poor. And uh, you know the guys pushed in the end. The second goal is um, yeah, just can't happen. <laughs> I don't know. I could say a lot of things, but just can't happen. Um, and then we're chasing the game again. And then once they're chasing the game in, in the second one, then they just really had numbers behind the ball, defended the goal well. We tried to put different bodies, size, different things into the box. I think, again, down the stretch, impatient from where we were putting balls into the box. We needed to advance the ball and put the box in from, ball in from better areas. But, um, yeah, I, I just thought overall the – the overall performance tonight was just not good enough, and I give them credit because they came in and they uh, they protected themselves well. Uh, they found good good moments and the right times to try to press us a little bit higher. We didn't manage it and adapt well, um, and they took uh, took a couple chances. Not to say they didn't have other looks on goal, but they took a couple chances for sure that that goals change games, and we had to chase twice and uh, didn't did not uh, did not do well. Um, yeah, I think again. Sometimes uh, we tried to play Kev and and Dayon together to um, <clears throat> to force their three to have to defend our two more. And I didn't think the the coordination of their running was necessarily good enough to make their three really defend them. I felt like they kind of played on in isolation of each other, which made it too easy for the back uh, the back three to defend them. And and hence we just didn't get many chances out of the out of the game as well. I know we've talked a lot about this being a great chance to get some of the trophy and now yeah. that, that chance is over, so is there disappointment on the, on the team? Is there frustration? Sure. I mean, how do you guys feel that? Yeah, there's disappointment, uh, for sure. It's, um, you know, I think for the group, we've talked about this being something that was that we wanted to go for, and it was something important. And part of it was for the experiences like we had tonight. And, okay, it didn't it didn't go our way. Um, but this is what it feels like to lose in a knockout game or games that matter. And if you just you only have so many games in the course of the season that are like this, where there's really something on the line where you really feel that. And it's it's better to experience that a, a couple times or a few times throughout the course of the season than to have it just at the end of the season. Like we, we um, that's one of the reasons why we went for it is is to have. The emotion that is involved in a night like tonight, good, bad, or indifferent, we have to now we have to deal with it. And so, um, you know, the message in the locker room was we didn't get it done. We all cared and we wanted to do it. Our performance 
maybe didn't feel sometimes like that, but but they did. The group cared very much about uh, about this. Were very disappointed and upset and angry and uh, at themselves. And uh, now we have to leave this behind us because now we have. Uh, the season to really focus on. And so now the challenge for us over the next 48 hours is to make sure this game and this this event that we took serious, put it behind us, and now we have everything to play for in front of us. And that's, uh, that's the key of the next 48 hours. But I, I want the group to, like I said, to kind of feel this in a second so that we understand this isn't a position that we need to be in and what, what it takes to make sure we're not in this position again, right? And some of that was, I felt like we just kind of got outplayed at times tonight that, um, that we need to do more of, you know, we didn't play with the same intensity tonight as we did against LAFC as an example, or against some of the other games. And that can't happen, right? Every time we've got to play with that. So. Hey Greg, why do you think that is? I mean, it's a, it's a knockout game. It's a four part game, but you guys sort of seen, they only look like the first half against Portland. Uh, just joined us over yeah. I mean, why do you think that is? Yeah. I, I mean, I, anything I, I, would give you is um, one, I, I think <clears throat> there has to be, we have to respect every opposition the same way we respect LAFC, we respect the Austins, we respect those teams. I think I think on the weekend against Portland, it was a little bit of a different reason. I think it was kind of first game back, first, uh, I thought we just were disjointed between whatever the time of day, heat, different things. I felt like we just weren't moving at the same speed and together. Today, I just feel like we didn't adapt inside of the game and we didn't uh, we didn't have the right intensity. Some players, some did, some didn't, right? The right intensity to duel and compete. And and uh, I don't have a great answer, but I would say guys who continually do that won't play. And that's, that's going to be, that's the message that they understand is uh, every player on the field has to play with the right intensity and the right, in, right intention, not just play well, but play hard and play, compete for those, those things. So... Um, <clears throat> it's a short turnaround. Them too. I, I don't have. I don't have anything other than what you would have as well. Is the group needs to knuckle down and come out with the mentality to really fight and compete and battle first, and then the soccer game will come second. So. Hey, Greg, uh, just uh, visiting their winning goal. Uh, did Klinsman? Did he misplay that in your in your eyes? And in terms of uh, the, the creation of the goal, it comes off a deflection off of Ephra. Uh, two passes and the guy's there and nobody's collapsing on him. Who should have second goal? Second, uh, they're, yeah, they're winning. I, d I honestly don't really remember how we got the ball. If I would estimate that we probably lost the ball carelessly because I feel like we did that too much. Okay, all right. Well, he ends up with the ball and he's still about 40 to 35 to 40 yards out. He's got a decent look, and you see him winding up. I didn't feel like anyone was in the way between the ball and Jonathan, and he had a, felt like he had a good look at it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if he felt like in some way there might be an, uh, they, someone might be in position to deflect it, or I don't know why, but I felt like just his reaction to get across the goal and to dive and get in front of the ball was a little bit slow. Kid hit it, he hit it well, but at the same time, from that distance with a pretty clear sight, it, it it seems like you, it should be saved, and I would say he probably will say the same thing. I haven't spoken to him about it, but I would think he says he would say the same thing based on the look on his face. I guarantee you he'll say the same thing. But I, I just felt like again it was, yeah, just a, a slow, slow read and slow, uh, slow to get across. One of the positives of the game was your goal, um, one of the nicer own goals I think the Galaxy ever scored. But uh, the uh, the ball that Apple put in there. Um, yeah, the corner kick. Yeah, it was it was good. I mean, we I felt like in the last couple of games, we've been a little bit more dangerous on our set pieces. That's something that hasn't been a major strength of ours. But um, I think our service from Mefra today and and from Sam over the last couple of games has been a little bit more dangerous. It was good to get something off a set piece, but uh, it wasn't enough. So I don't take too much from it other than uh, it was a goal. Yeah. And lastly, uh, what was Mark's situation today? Why are you looking yeah, Mark was ill. It's a non-COVID-related uh, illness, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get him turned around quickly. We'll we'll see. It's kind of day to day. So, right. Okay. Um, you guys talked a little bit about it. Uh, Same energy, obviously. You play LAFC games very animated. You guys play San Diego Pride too. And today, what are the dynamics this one? Because you could obviously mess around with lineups a little bit and hope that maybe the lineup that you put on the field to start. Would help you guys get a little bit of relief, and you have to make early subs. Just the dynamics of kind of the shift that all around in terms of 
knowing that there's a knockout game on the line and a trophy on the line for the number of Yeah, I, I just, <clears throat> you know, again, I think there are some guys that, that, that on our team need to, to turn the meter when it comes to just intensity and compete and fight to a different level. I think, you know, we have some guys who come out and they do the running and they do the, they'll do the work and they'll do some of the stuff. But, um, but in these games, sometimes there's, it's about being physical. It's about winning space. It's about winning first and second balls. It's about some of those things. And I think sometimes maybe within the mentality of our group, we, um, our mindset is a little bit like the game is going to be all soccer all the time. And it, it's not, there's still some, the foundation that you have to have to play soccer is you still have to outcompete the opposition and you still have to do some of that stuff. And I feel like we're a little light sometimes, um, in, in that category and, and certain guys I think are consistently there and certain guys I think sometimes have those moments and, uh, and then there's some days where we get everybody on the same page and it looks probably at our best. And so uh, I think when we, when we go out and we lead the foul count against oppositions and we show that physical presence, which is sometimes not that we out foul the opposition, but sometimes when you see that on the scorecard that you have more fouls than the opposition means you're physically kind of present in the game, our record's actually pretty good. Uh, when, we, when we're lower in that category, then our record isn't quite as good. And so th those are things I think our group, which is um, just needs to remember and has to prioritize going into each game and not just some games. Uh, Greg, two, uh, two, two part question. Um, I know you talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, this, this seemed like the dominating LAC to, you know, obviously lose it tonight. What, how, how do you describe the identity of the team? And the second part to that, what, um, did it ever cross your mind to start Chicharito, Julian Araujo, and Victor Bastard? Because it seemed once they came in, even though the game was tied, you had to kind of chase them a little bit. Yes and no. I mean, <clears throat> for one, uh, Victor came out of the last game with an issue in his ribs, so um, it, it was he wasn't necessarily ready to start and go the long haul. Julian arrived in training yesterday not feeling well, uh, and so he didn't really even train with the group, so we limited his minutes tonight because of that. Uh, you know, Javi, it's always a consideration, but there's always a risk reward in fast turnarounds of two days. Uh, with Javi, there's a risk that I wasn't really willing to play with at the start of the game, but hoping that he could come on at the end of the game and, and, uh, and add his, his part to it. Um, so some of this is still trying to calculate the fact that we are in two competitions and that certain things are going on with certain guys that not everybody is privy to but that we have to I have to manage and we have to manage from from that side of things because we are still in a block of it was eight games in 29 days and and um, so we still have to make some of those considerations so uh, we should have managed the game better with the guys that were on the field and um, it's also a question to ask when guys get put on the field in these opportunities who's going to step up so because this is what I said when we play these games that matter that have emotion you're going to find out who at the end of the season and the games that do matter who's ready for for that and so um, there's an assessment in all of this as well on that side of things yeah Hi. Um, so since the Cup was in 2019, you're kind of right, and since then there's been 19 more teams added to this expansion in the Cup. Sure. What do you think that this means for smaller division teams? Like, what kind of hope do you think this creates for those teams? I, I think it's kind of the beauty of the event. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a challenge for for clubs, for all clubs, just because of the congestion that it brings to the and the farther you go, the more congestion you get. And that that is uh, everybody has to manage through that. Um, the smaller teams don't even have as big a rosters as us in some ways, so they've got to manage through that as well. Um, but I, I think that's the beauty of the event is, you know, a team like Sacramento comes into the L.A. Galaxy Stadium and the game uh, is you know, arguably one of the, probably their biggest game of the season, maybe. And uh, so they're going to come with a different level of intensity, concentration. They shouldn't, but but as human nature has it, sometimes these teams do, which is when you see these upsets, uh, which many of them have happened this season, um, uh, I think that's the beauty of the competition all around the world. There's cup competitions in every uh, in every league around the world or in every country around the world, and there's always upsets and knockoffs and um you know that's that's what people 
in a way I love to see is, is, is those moments. So, um, I think every team will continue to choose to place whatever weight they want on the, on the event and, uh, on the competition. Um, and for us, again, I, I, I think with a group that didn't get to play this competition last year and didn't go into the playoffs last year, uh, this was an important thing for us for the reasons I, I mentioned earlier that we wanted to manage through this and, uh, and try to do our best, and we fell short of that. So, in the end. Okay, thank you. Hi guys. All right, guys. We're now joined by tonight's captain, Calvin Morgan. Hello. Um, disappointing loss, and it, it just seemed that uh, you guys weren't on tonight. What, what was most difficult about this game, and uh, maybe thinking in terms of the timing of Portland, and uh, you know, and how that might have played into it as well. Yeah, it's uh, as you said, it's a very disappointing loss. Um, uh, this was a big opportunity for us as a as a as a team to uh, to try to win a title. So as you said, like it's a it's a big opportunity that we that we have let slip. Um, congratulations to Sacramento. Uh, they were very organized, but um, we had the ball, but we didn't create as much. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a difficult one to 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 process right now. Kevin, I believe you're wearing the armband on, on today to start the game. Um, as one of the leaders of this, of this team, what's, what's the identity for the LA Galaxy? Because we've seen you guys dominate LAFC, but we also saw you guys on the wrong side of today's game. Um, first of all, everybody, uh, we, ha we had a game plan. Uh, we tried to uh, execute the game plan. Obviously, they scored, they scored uh, within five minutes, so they start to believe it makes it difficult. Um, but still, you know, um, we come back in the first half, 1-1, uh, and then I think you have to push through. But we, uh, uh, I think, uh, against a team that's, so, that's very defensive and very organized, you have to move the ball quicker, and we didn't do that enough. And um, yeah, then it's easy for them. They keep, the, they keep the play in front of them, and they just close out the gaps. And uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, we, we all have to look in the mirror because, uh, as I said, it's, it's, a, it's a big opportunity that we have let slip, um, and you don't get those, those moments often. And, um, when you get them, and uh, no disrespect to, to Sacramento, but just looking to yourself, um, you have to try to, yeah, to take those moments. And uh, if we if we want to make the playoffs, it's also going to be knockout games. And this was uh, this was a big a big moment for us. Um, yeah, to get used to it, you know. Um, as you said, LAFC, it was a big game, and you don't have to uh, go to to any of us to say. You play LFC, but it has to be the same intensity when you play against Sacramento. And um, I think we started well, but uh, you know we, we had the ball for a long time. I think the first two minutes they didn't touch it, and the first guy, the, the first moment they get behind us, it's a goal. But um, yeah, as I said, if we want to make the playoffs, which I believe we will, um, uh, this is um, a big moment that we can learn from because um, in the playoff you only get one 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 game to win, and um, yeah. If I have to take something away of that, this is that's that that you have to that you have to be ready for those moments. Hey, Kelvin, um, you were sort of mentioning it, and I know Greg put a lot of emphasis on you know taking this tournament seriously yeah. and trying to win a cup. You guys haven't done that, and, yeah. and you crash out now. Is there a uh, a worry that you can have a negative effect on this team that you that you have a short turnaround against San Jose and, and this team? You know. <laughs> um. Yeah, I know this question would come, but um, I think. Um, you know the good teams; they know how to handle bad moments. You know, and I believe we had a good. I believe we have a good team. I believe we have a team that can uh, that can uh, reach uh, big things. But sometimes you have a bump in the road, and this is obviously a very big one. You know, as uh, as you as you mentioned, Greg said, this is an this is a cup we can win that we want to win, because um, as LA Galaxy, the club, the history. It's a club that wins a lot of times and won and has won a lot of titles. So that's what you want. But yeah, we hit a bump, as you said. It might be, it can have a negative effect, but I don't believe. I think we have, we have good guys in the locker room. Um, we have enough experience to lead the older and the younger guys. And I think we have a very experienced coach who's been, who's proven uh, in the past few years in, in this league what he's uh, capable of. So. Um, focusing on that, you know, you have to, you have, you have to learn from these moments. Even if it's hard, you have to learn from it. And I think we can take a lot of stuff away and um, 
and use it when we uh, advance in the, in the league and uh, hopefully the playoffs. Craig also mentioned uh, maybe some guys weren't matching the intensity out there. And he said that whenever it came down the stretch that the guys who don't match the intensity don't play. And that's, pre that's a pretty strong thing for a coach to say after a, a game like that. Um, as a veteran, what do, you, what do you think of that situation? <laughs> You know, I've been doing this for a lot of, for a long, long time, and he used the right words. When you play against a team which you think you're better of, better than, you have to come with the same intensity, and then your individual qualities will have the, yeah, will make the uh, the difference. And if you if you don't bring the same intensity as they do, yeah, it's going to be very difficult. Same right here. Hey, Kelly, we have seen you guys, you know, take losses and come back, bounce back. Yeah. Um, but how close, how far is this team? Being where you guys need to be at. If you base it on the night, a long way. But as I said, like since I came here, we had a we had a fantastic preseason, and you know the this this league is a, is a is a marathon. Obviously, this is a different tournament, uh, which you only have to win like six games, I believe, to win, to 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 get a title. So it's the easiest way to do it, and if uh, it, it's cup. You know, you have nights like this. It, you, ha you see it all over, all over the world. But it's not something we we, we, we wanted to happen. You know, um, we really believed that we could win it. We really wanted to win it. The belief was there. Um, everybody was focused. Maybe we were too focused. But um, yeah, um, what what can I say? Um, congratulations to to Sack, and um, we have to learn from this and, and keep going. The, the lack of meaningful games affects the team in moments like this where you have to chase. How do you feel the season and its lack of meaningful games week in, week out failed maybe to prepare the club for moments where you have to be hard in moments like this? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you have to be ready for all for all the games, you know. Um, look, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a short turnaround. Um, the season is long. Um, but I think, as a, as a professional player, you want you, ha you have to have that uh, that mindset for yourself individually to always want to win. Um, meaningful or not, um, for yourself as an athlete, you, you you must get it from from inside yourself to to want to win every game. And uh, it's 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 not an individual sport. You have to do it with 11 guys and the guys who come from the bench. So in that sense, it's a little bit more difficult. But I think. Um, if everybody has the the right mindset, um, every every game counts. You know, uh, as I said, we wanna we wanna we wanna we want to win titles. We want to win cups, as many prizes as possible, and yeah, then you have to be ready for for all the games. And one last one here. Yeah. Hi, Colin. I have Hi. two questions for you, real quick. Yeah. Um, obviously, you came through playing Dutch football in under twenties, and yeah. you're used to the Dutch Cup and the FA Cup. Now you have the US Open Cup. Yeah. What do you think that this means for the game of football? So, what exactly? What the cup or? What do you think like this means to the people? Like the cup. This cup provides like the U.S. Open Cup. Um, I think it's very. I think it's very exciting because it gives uh, smaller clubs or teams from lower leagues an opportunity to to battle with the teams that play in the higher leagues. Uh, you've seen it in the in the last round with uh, I, I guess Minnesota. Now you see it with us. Um, yeah, in England it's very big. It's 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 something special, you know, that that can bring everybody together. And I think um, it's something to embrace because uh, soccer is a very uh, is the biggest sport in the world, and it's still growing in the U.S. So when you have those opportunities to bring uh, small and big teams together, you should you should embrace it. Thank you. And my second question is, how did you prepare for this game against Sacramento? Um, prepare as I always always do. Um, you know, watch a little bit of football at home, and and then just just come in and uh, try to to give up, to give my all. And obviously today it was not enough. Um, but yeah, we have a short turnaround and we have to focus on the on the game coming up because uh, the league is uh, the table is very tight. Uh, there's teams under us that are yeah trying to get uh, a momentum, and that's something we have to to try to get to and get on a, maybe a 10, 15 game streak, that would be, that would be nice. Would, would make everything a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, guys.
Thank you.